everyone hope you are good and be happy always once again welcome to shachi's academy and today we will discuss indifference curve analysis let me ask a question from all of you can i say that i got 100 satisfaction by consuming these biscuits or i got 200 satisfaction by consuming the mixture of this packet no we never say that we just say that it was good or it was fantastic it was delicious or something like that but we never say i got 100 satisfaction 200 satisfaction something like that because professor hicks also held that utility cannot be measured in terms of mathematical units and that's what is given by indifference curves analysis there are basically two approaches of measurement of utility that is cardinal approach and ordinal approach we have already discussed cardinal approach of measurement of utility and what is utility that satisfaction we derive from consumption of any commodity is known as utility and professor marshall as we have discussed in consumer's equilibrium in our last chapter held that utility can be measured in terms of mathematical units those were known as utils okay and but professor hicks as uh, given in indifference curve analysis, he says that utility can never be measured. It can at best be compared. For example, I am getting more satisfaction as per my preferences. I am getting more satisfaction by consuming this mixture in comparison to these biscuits. So I can compare satisfaction. I can never say I am getting 100 satisfaction or 200 satisfaction in any terms or mathematical units. So, today we will discuss indifference curves and what is an indifference curve? Basically, indifference curve gives alternative combinations of two commodities which give same level of satisfaction to a consumer and con consumer becomes indifferent. He is indifferent or he has indifference towards combinations of those commodities, right? Now, what is indifference curve? A definition of indifference curve? Indifference curve presents different combinations of two commodities. We are taking only two commodities for the sake of simplicity, but in real life, we consume many commodities at the same time or combinations of different commodities. So, here for the sake of simplicity and explanation, we are taking two commodities, combinations of two commodities, giving same level of satisfaction. Take for example here, two apples plus three oranges okay this is one combination that is combination a and second combination is three apples plus two oranges does it make any difference to anyone no so in these combinations a consumer may be indifferent so it doesn't make any difference to that person see indifference curve has been derived from the word difference that means if we are not making difference towards two combination that means we are indifferent towards them or that is given by indifference curve a curve that gives different combinations to commodities that we are indifferent towards right so we can explain indifference curve with the help of indifference schedule or schedule whatever we may say and we also call it indifference set okay so what is indifference set set of alternative combinations of two goods which offer same level of satisfaction you can say set of different combinations or alternative combination doesn't make any difference and it's just same as the definition of your curve set of alternative or different combinations of two goods which offer same level of satisfaction towards which a consumer is indifferent i have not written that line that might have made that lengthy so here we have a list or schedule or a table here we have different combinations like combination a b c d here we have taken pizza and coke right uh, apples and oranges are given in every book so I have taken for the sake of simplicity I have taken the favorite food of youngsters that is pizza and coke in our uh, pizza section of column uh, pizza section we have taken commodity x as pizza and coke as commodity y in first combination this combination a we are taking one pizza plus 11 cokes right and we are getting satisfaction s in second combination we are uh, taking in this combination B, we are taking two pizzas and eight cokes. Here, we are taking three pizzas and six cokes. And at last, in the section that is a combination D, we are taking four pizzas and five cokes. Here, we can see that as consumption of pizza is increasing, consumption of coke is decreasing. Why? Because of budget constraint. Budget. See, budget of any uh, individual or income remains constant here we take uh, one more assumption that price also remains constant right so if budget is constant we have limited income so 
to increase consumption of one commodity we have to forego or leave the consumption of another commodity so we can have the commodities in exchange of one another so we can have more of pizza and less of coke or more of coke and less of pizza but it doesn't make any difference to us and we are getting satisfaction as s and it remains constant or same throughout this schedule so a schedule which represent different combinations of goods which offer same level of satisfaction is known as indifference uh, schedule right when we represent or take this schedule to uh, towards the diagrammatic present representation we get this uh, diagram here we have just framed or we have just put these combinations in diagrammatic form here we are taking 11 cokes that is combination that is commodity uh, y and this is combination a here we are getting 11 cokes and one pizza then we are getting eight um, cokes and two pizza then we are getting six cokes and three pizza and at last we are getting four cokes and uh, sorry five cokes here five cokes and four pizzas so here we have the combination a b c and d and this curve which is made by joining all these combinations is known as indifference curve that is ic with the help of ic we can see that this curve is negatively sloped why this can be explained with the help of marginal rate of substitution that is m r s this is very important concept and this is normally asked in exams also what is marginal rate of substitution and the formula for marginal rate of substitution is delta y by delta x now you may say what is delta y and what is delta x see delta means change of anything we have explained in other videos also delta means change of anything suppose we are moving from 11 cokes to 8 cokes so this is change in consumption of coke and we are moving from consumption of one pizza to consumption of two pizza that is our movement from one pizza to two pizza is change in consumption of our pizza so what is delta y we can see here delta y is from 11 2 this is 1 pizza so in this line we can construct this this is 1 pizza here and we are moving from 11 to 8 so here it is here so what is change in consumption of pizza only 1 pizza so x change in x delta x is equal to what 1 pizza and what is delta y delta y 11 minus 8 is what 3 so 3 so what is delta y delta y is 3 and delta x is 1 so sorry it's written here marginal rate of substitution is equal to delta y by delta x and at point here at b what is our marginal rate of substitution this is 3 by 1 this is 3 normally we take it as negative why as negative because to increase consumption of our pizza we have to decrease consumption of coke and that's why marginal rate of substitution is negative and this means that the slope of your ic curve is negative and we are moving from left to right on the curve that is indifference curve and that's why it is minus 3 now let's discuss the properties of indifference curve they are very important here you can see uh, first of all we need to discuss indifference map what is that indifference map is nothing but a a set of many indifference curves for example here we have uh, see we have ic1 ic2 ic3 ic4 that means we are having four indifference curves on one uh, in one diagram and this is known as indifference curve and here ic1 is lower to ic2 uh, and here ic3 is higher to ic2 and uh, ic4 is the highest curve and here we can see that higher indifference curve gives higher satisfaction. Here it is a property high IC gives higher satisfaction. That means as we move from lower indifference curve to higher indifference curve, we get more satisfaction. This may be owing to many reasons. This may be owing to increase in income of any person or uh, decrease in price of the commodities. A person may move from lower IC to higher IC or indifference curve and he may get more satisfaction but he will be getting say, uh, same satisfaction on different combinations of same indifference curve right then we have negative slope of indifference curve 
we have already discussed in our marginal rate of substitution that the slope of interference curve is negative because when we have to increase consumption of one commodity, we have to decrease consumption of another commodity as our budget is limited, our income is constant. So we cannot have more of every commodity. So we have negative slope. Okay. Then convex to origin. Convex to origin means marginal rate of substitution again comes into scene that delta y by delta x is there and we have to decrease uh, consumption of one commodity when we have to increase combination of another commodity. Convex to origin means this is origin and this convex here. Concave means it is a cave like structure towards the origin. This is origin and this is convex lens we have studied in physics. So this is convex to origin and this is known as the property of indifference come. This is a very important property. Never intersects in each other. That means Two indifference curves never intersect each other. For example, suppose if they intersect each other, what will happen? See here, IC1 is the lower indifference curve and IC2 is the higher indifference curve. And both of them are intersecting at point A here. By the assumption of intersection, we can say that point A is equal to B. And similarly, A is also is equal to C because they are lying on the same point here. A is equal to B and A is equal to C also. So A is equal to C. By this method, B is equal to C. But by our assumption, this point is lying on, high, uh, on lower indifference curve and this line on your high indifference curve. But they cannot give the same level of satisfaction. That means the indifference curve cannot intersect with each other, right? Does not touch either axis C. When there are two commodities and consumption is going on, indifference curve can never touch either of the axis. For example, like this, it cannot touch x axis, uh, y axis or x axis like this. Or in other case also, this is y and this is x axis. So these are the properties of indifference curves. And later on, we will discuss in another video. We will discuss next video. We will discuss our consumer's equilibrium with the help of indifference curve analysis. So keep watching our videos and keep subscribing our channel and liking it and showing love and affection on our channel. Thank you so much.